Then you. Well, I, I suggest <clears throat> that there's no such thing as a new age. We're only remembering things from our past. Yeah. Yoga, and all these <coughs> different meditations, etc. Healings. Yeah. Uh, this is all what the ancients did. Yeah, it is. And they observed the night sky and they saw different star patterns above them and they realized there were 13 what they referred to as ages and times and so they began to assign symbols to it it wasn't so much that the stars were affecting them it's just that those were the stars in the sky when the nature on the earth was in such a nature and so one of them they called Taurus and they felt that wow that really represents the strength of the bull and it's the age of building solid things so the pyramids and Stonehenge and gosh some of the Teocalis and just all of these magnificent things of power and architecture and stone and strength and then it went into the age of Aries which was the sheep and sheep and shepherds and then it went into the age of Pisces the fish and the fishers of men and the schools of thought. And now it's, they feel that it's moving into an age of Aquarius, an age when people will rediscover the clay pot that Aquarius is carrying is symbolic of your body. And that the waters of memory and reflection will be honored again and the remembrances of those records that you just referred to will come to light again and lift us into a completely different understanding of what your body is as a crystal construct and the capacities of the crystals within you to be able to hear and to see and even travel through space and time. So I think we're in for a wonderful, wonderful period. For those who are switched on, I'd imagine that's true. Yeah, so cool. Um, I just wanted to reflect that um, the word atmos in, in Greek is actually coming from the Sanskrit atma. Cool. And atma means the individual. Yeah. Jiva atma means individual living entity. Yeah. And paramatma means the super soul, which is a an individual spark of God that travels continuously with every living thing. It's the impartial observer. It's perfect. We're never alone. Yeah. You studied a lot of these things. <laughs> I love your depth and I love your heart. And I really appreciate your passion to interview and to record ideas of scholars. And I'm not embarrassed by saying I'm a scholar because it just means one who observes, not trying to take on credentials and authority at all, uh, as I'm sure most of the people you interview. They're using their own genius, their own innate, inherent ability to observe and to think and to question and to communicate, and for that I'm thankful. If you had a magic wand, what, what would you like to see changed promptly? I would like to see people wake up to the fact that healthcare is a sick and dangerous system and it's doing more harm than good and that people need to fire their doctors and stay away from them now and not take medications, not undergo the knife. Your body is not deficient, it can heal and repair itself if we support it. And with that, if we could bring down that industry, which is the wealthiest industry on the face of this earth, a healthy nation means a bankrupt medical pharmaceutical system. And that is their biggest threat is that people are going to be healthy. And that's the truth. I'd like to see the magic wand help more and more people to wake up that they should not be fighting disease, that they should be laying down all the weapons of war and coming over and embracing behaviors that support healing and health and longevity. 
And if they would do that, then that would ultimately mean the bankruptcy of the factory schooling of today's modern education, which people are academically indoctrinated to the trivia of that experience. We need to get back to the ancient ideas and scholars and what they knew. Children are born on fire and with passions and light and interest and let them join schools of thought where other people are interested in the same things they are. And they can switch up that interest later if they find they're no longer interested. But they had a tripartite movement of mastery. You started out as an apprentice, you went to a journeyer, and then to a master crafter. And you taught and helped others coming up through. And the new ones, because they're new to it, will bring in new light and creative genius and add to that subject of study, to the science, which means a deepening. It means knowledge. And it's so interesting because so much science today is bought and paid for crap. There's no science at all behind it, but we're taught that it is. So I would love to see this whole system just crash and go away. I'd like to see public education go. I'd like to see hospitals and doctors go. And so many of the industries that are making our own personal environments toxic. It's got to change. Um, what does sacred mean to you? Sacred to me means the highest concentration of the brightest light. And to me, almost all words that are precious go back to a description of the body. And we have in the temple a pillar or column. And there's 33 vertebrae. And, well, as you get into it, the 32 and then the atlas and it holds the heavens. But you also have the same number of teeth. So the 32 vertebrae leading to the higher cranium, um, those teeth, the vertebrae, uh, at the very bottom is the sacrum and seven vertebrae that holds a fluid that they believed you could learn through certain behaviors and diet, which comes of deity, meaning leading to God or that which is good. But those offerings and certain behaviors in pleasure and touch and even intimacy would release that highest concentrated fluid of light and that it would come up the pillar into the heavens and flood it and lift you to a greater light. I think that from that, the word sacred literally means that which is most precious. And there are things within us that is never activated unless we learn about it and act upon it. And so to me, again, it comes down to the most precious treasures that we are sacred to one another. And we need to honor that and respect that and serve one another in love. That those are sacred concept. Don Tomlin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So good to be here. I appreciate you. We'll see each other again whether you like it or not. I do like it and I'll see you in May when you return. Oh beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.